This is Mike and um, today uh, I'm going to be showing you a little project I found on GitHub. Um, this is really a cool project. This guy, uh, I don't know how you pronounce his username, Zybite? Zybite. I think it's Zybite. Because, yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so this is a really cool project. It's uh, called uh, J Sketcher or JS Sketcher. So it's 100% JavaScript um, browser based parametric CAD. Now, it is really amazing. Now, I, I've downloaded the latest version. You can get yours set up by cloning the, the Git repository and then running these commands um, to, to get your thing set up. Um, and uh, once you get it set up, um, you can have your own running version just like this. So, right here, um, I'm connected and um, connected to the, the local host. Now keep in mind, everything is running in the browser. So right now there isn't any kind of like server side functionality for storing your files in the cloud. Everything's happening locally inside the browser. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out. Now when you're creating a 3D model in this particular CAD system, you need to uh, start off with a plane. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to create a plane. You can create it on any of the, the three axes. Um, and I'm just going to hit OK. So right there, we've created a plane. Now, I can't do anything yet because I don't have anything selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick that plane. Now notice how it changed a little bit of a different color. And I'm going to go to Edit Sketch. Now what it did here is it loaded up the, uh, the 2D sketcher. This allows me to draw a two-dimensional sketch. So I'm going to just draw a sketch. Now notice how if I come over here to the end of that point, or the end of that line, how if I click, it links them, it creates all these coincident constraints, and if I hover over them, it highlights them, um, which is pretty nice. If I click and I drag on this particular line, or if I click and drag on like this point here, I can adjust the sketch and I can do some other things like if I pick a line I can tell it that I want to assign a distance to it and set it to something like 500. <coughs> um, I could do some other stuff like I can assign some types of constraints to it like I can do horizontal, I can pick two lines and I can tell them that I want them to be parallel I can pick a couple of lines and I can tell them that I want them to be equal in length. Now the way that I'm doing a multi-pick is I'm picking the first item and then I'm holding down shift and I'm clicking the second item. So right here I can set them to be equal in length. I could do the same thing. Um, well, I could do something similar here. I can, I can go and hold down the shift key and pick two lines and tell them to be like 90 degrees. So right here I've drawn a rectangle. Um, you'll notice how I can adjust the location here, but the length has already been locked down, which is pretty nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save up here. Now it's very important to hit save after every single um, sketch. So I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to come back down here. Way at the bottom you'll have this 3D view tab, and I'm going to click that, and it's going to bring us back over to the 3D environment. So what I'm going to do... Um, you got to make sure that you still have this plane selected because if you uh, if you unselect everything, right, you can't do an extrude and you can't do a cut. You can't do anything with it unless you have it selected. So right here, I'm selecting that plane. The sketch itself is attached to that plane, um, and that's going to be a similar concept that's going to be uh, discussed a little bit later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an extrude. Now, what it's doing is it's looking, it's creating that extrude. You can see how it kind of draws an outline of that geometry. If I hold down, uh, if I put my cursor in the height box and I use the scroll wheel, you can see that I can adjust the length on it. I could also just enter a value. If I hold down the shift key and I use the scroll wheel, it goes a little bit faster. It goes in increments of 100, so that's pretty nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit OK and I've created a, uh, a 3D object. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of the faces on here. 
Now by picking that face, or, or that one, I could pick any face I want, but I'm going to pick this face and I'm going to go to Edit Sketch. So right here, the face itself is going to be the sketch. So if I edit that sketch, it shows me the outline of that face and it's going to allow me to draw some geometry. So I'm going to just draw a, uh, a circle on here. And I am going to go down here to Properties and I'm going to change this to Construction. And I'm going to create a couple of lines. So, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm just going to draw a line like that to the center point. And I'm going to draw one over there. And I'm going to stop, to stop sketching, I'm going to hit Escape. So if I go and I hold down the Shift key, I can set these two lines to be equal to each other. I could do something like setting um, this one to be horizontal, um, this one to be vertical, and I could do something like um, attaching that point to that line by you know, doing a multi-select and then saying point on line or curve. I could do the same thing over here, point on line or curve. And if I were to go and set a value to this, oh, sorry, if I were to go and set a value for this line, I can set this to something like 200 and it will go and it'll adjust and update. I can also set like a, a diameter or something here. I can set a, a radius. Um, Let's just set that to like 80. Now remember, if I go back over here, I can edit these values. Um, so right there, I can edit that. Now these two lines, these are construction geometry. They're not actually going to be used in the resulting extrude. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit save, go back over to the 3D view, and do something like a, a cut. So I'm going to do a cut. Um, it's going to ask me how deep I want to have that cut, and I'm just going to hit OK. And there we are, that's the resulting geometry. Now, if I wanted to go and do something a little bit different here, like if I go and I pick this face again, this is going to bring me into a new sketch. Um, it's going to allow me to go and edit that sketch, and notice how we have all this reference geometry. So all this yellow reference geometry, that's from the previous features. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty nice. So I'm just going to kind of draw something else here. And I'm going to hit save. And go back over here. Um, and now I can just do something else like an extrude again. You know, I can create an extrude. And this is, this is basically what 3D modeling is like in this particular CAD application. And the amazing thing is that it's running all inside the web browser. Now if I come down here and I hit save, um, that saves it to my local browser cache. So if I ever go to this localhost uh, 3000 again, and let's just hit refresh, it'll still be here. Now if I wanted to have a different file name, um, I could do slash question mark and then like my file. And if I do that, that's creating a new file. So, you know, this right here is a blank empty uh, file. If I go back over here, um, this is the, the one I was just working on. I can also download it as an STL, so you could do a, you can do like a, a 3D print from it. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, so uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, hopefully, I'll have some more videos here at some point, going through some of the, the 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 features and how it works. But that should be a good primer for anybody to take a look at it and start playing with it. Okay, thank you.